So just four days after clinching the coveted Formula One world title in Abu Dhabi, I got the chance to join Nico Rosberg at the off-road track at Mercedes-Benz World to get to know him a little bit better. But little did I know at that stage, or anyone else for that matter, that just 24 hours later he'd announce his shock retirement from the sport. Well, Nico, first of all, man, I mean, just massive congratulations. What, Thank you. what an incredible way to finish the longest season we've had in Formula One. Okay. Has it sunk in at all? No, just when you say it now like that, it's still like... <laughs> Seriously? I mean, it's just it's amazing just, finish. Yeah. How bad was the hangover on Monday morning? It was pretty bad. <laughs> it was pretty painful because yeah. uh, we only went to bed at 9am. 9, 9 so, um, and went then you were the straight on a plane, right? Then Monday I did have a bit of time off and then it was Monday night on the plane. Yeah. Slept on the plane. Tuesday celebrations in Kuala Lumpur. Yeah. Again on the plane. And Wednesday celebrations in my uh, birth town in uh, Germany. Yeah. So okay. with, uh, well, that must for, have been nice. For, for, you know, for Germany. Um, and then two hours home, and then here. So uh, that's pretty frantic. Oh, you did get home. I mean, that's cool. Yeah, so you saw yeah, your two you hours saw, at home. <laughs> you saw your uh, your daughter, yes, I guess, for the yeah. first time. How was yeah. that? No, no, she was in Abu Dhabi with me. Oh, she was there. Yeah, they were all there. Um, oh, well, that must have been pretty spectacular. What was the um, what was the most kind of nerve wracking moment of the whole of Sunday for you? There was two. That was um, well, of course, all the well, no, no, there was two. It was uh, having first happen in front of me. Yeah. And hearing the message from Tony, crit <laughs> critical to pass for the championship. I can imagine, yeah. Jesus. Because I think we all felt for you at that point. That's pretty crazy oh, Max, as you called him after the race. Yeah, so that was a really, really tough moment. Because I could see the guys behind. Yeah. And I could see the ones, I could see the stop window coming soon. Yeah. Where they could stop and jump me. Yeah, of know? course, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. so, uh, but you dispatched then, him pretty clinically. I mean, it was actually no, and then yeah, it was a, it was a great battle, and uh, but one of the most intense moments in my whole F1 career. <laughs> that moment, and yeah. that, that battle with him, because yeah. you know he, I know he's going to take risks, and I know he's going to try everything, it was and it was close. so damn close, yeah, yeah. so damn close. Do you know the um, the two most nerve wracking moments on your behalf for me were one was the the, the final pit stop, because. You know, having been involved in those myself for many years, yeah, I yeah. felt for your guys. They'd serviced Lewis's car already; it had gone yeah. very well. And you know, at that moment, for those guys, that is a nerve-wracking period of time. And I guess yeah, for so you as well. That's funny you say that. That's something that I don't see. You know, yeah. I hadn't even considered that. Yeah. But now that you say it, it's it's honestly, man. Of it's course, the, it must be yeah. just as crazy as other things. It is. And, and I'm so in my in my thing that I that's something that, for example, I didn't realize and I hadn't ever heard just thought of. Well, next time now. you'll have that in mind. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> And now I should actually go to that, uh, all the Give people who did, the do, back, the, who did do the pit stop it, and say uh, thanks so much for getting the job done so well because I think it was the fastest pit stop as well. Yeah, and uh, it's in that in that heat of the moment. The thing is, I always say to people about the pit stops is actually it's a really easy job. All you got to do is pick up a wheel and lift it on or take one off. Yeah, but in that yeah. moment, it's the hardest job in the world. Well, and, there uh, you go. Same same driving the race car. Yeah, of course. Yeah. It's the easiest job for us to do a good, decent lap. <laughs> yeah. But in that moment, yeah. <laughs> to do a decent lap. And the other moment where I thought was possibly the most nerve-wracking, oh my goodness, <laughs> um, was the moment you picked up Bernie Eccleston in the cool-down room. <laughs> how did you, uh, how did you feel when you suddenly realised you were holding Bernie Eccleston up in the air? I don't know. <laughs> I was just a bit excited. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say I to you? I share that with Bernie. <laughs> share the excitement. When you put him down, what did he say to you? I think he, that's never happened to him before. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't really know what to do. <laughs> so it was quite funny, yeah. Well, I, um, listen, I watched uh, the race with my six-year-old son. I wasn't in Abu Dhabi. Yeah. So I watched it, and I've got to be honest, he's a fairly fickle character. He yeah. was a Lewis Hamilton fan for most of the season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God, that's steep. <laughs> but... Um, Come the end of the race on Sunday, he declared he's now a Nico Rosberg fan. Serious? So you've, you've gained wow, a fan. Amazing. That's so cool. And he asked me a genuine question, and I said to him, "Look, why don't you just record it?" And I'm seeing Nico on Thursday. I'll play it to him. So, through the magic of Bluetooth, here we go. Hi, I'm Rex. I want to you racing on Sunday. I just want to ask you a question. Does Lewis Hamilton ever come round to your house to play? <laughs> to play? To play. <laughs> Genuinely what he said to me after the race on Sunday. <laughs> I think I wouldn't let him in the door at the moment <laughs> if he wanted to come over to play. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. After what happened Sunday? Yeah. Um, no. So, does he come over to play? No, but uh, but he has uh, come over for burgers, for example. Because, does he, yeah. uh, 
because I'm lucky to have such a lo subjectively lovely wife yeah. who cooks so well. So uh, and Louis lives in the same building as I do. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we've uh, so even not too long ago, he's uh, he's been over for burgers and um, that's cool. That's nice. Uh, not recently, not ever since it got so so intense. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, and uh, I didn't catch uh, your son's name. Rex. Rex. Yeah. And Rex, thank you very very much then for the support <laughs> during Sunday's race, and I'm so cool that. Uh, you're is, is supporting me for the future. Well, I can't guarantee that if Lewis wins next time, he won't be a Lewis supporter, but... <laughs> so, uh, there's some people back in your factory in Brackley at the Mercedes team that have sent me some questions to put directly to you. First one, from a guy called Bobby Vandruff, who's the head of facilities in the factory. This is what he has to so say. So, when you have a really stressful moment and you're you know, having to focus, what do you think about what brings you back to a place where you can be successful? So when you when you have a really stressful moment over a race weekend, yeah. what do you focus on to get yourself back to some sort of normality? Ah, oh, well, that's a whole mind uh, mind game thing, isn't it? So first mm. of all, it's awareness awareness of uh, of your thoughts or, or things like that. You know, that's important. But uh, mind management, of course, during a race weekend is uh, is really important. And so, what I am, um, what I've tried to focus on is not the actual end result and goal, but it's like the path. You know, it's just the effort that I'm doing in the moment, yeah. um, and getting the best out of it rather than being focused on the end result. Do you think so, that's um, something you've done better this year than you've oh, done sure, in the past? Oh, for sure, yeah. It's, it's just experience helps, you know. Yeah, you get yeah. better at that every time because you always get uh, thrown back into your desire to be world champion, you know, and to yeah. have that celebration and everything, and then you yeah, take yeah. your eye off the ball when you think too much about... Um, I think that's what everybody thinks, you know. In, uh, you know, I spend a lot of time in the paddock. I think a lot of people in Formula 1 have, you know, will absolutely credit you with that this year. It's one of the things you've 100% done best and, and come to every race with that same focus, race by race, that mantra you've been talking about, but it's genuinely worked for you, hasn't it? It has, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that was, uh, it's one of the keys to the success this year. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, yeah. Okay, I've got another one from a guy. <laughs> and that, that goes all the way to, for example, in the last race, asking all my friends uh, not to come. Yeah. Because I just want to keep it, you know, as every other race. Yeah. So, and I, I, so I, because I had initially invited them all, <laughs> and then three weeks before, when I realized, oh damn, this is actually going to go to the wire. Yeah. Uh, I asked them all not to come again. And they were all right. They understood. And uh, of none of them listened to me, so they were all there, <laughs> but secretly. So. Uh, so they surprised you. So after it, was, the race. it was just amazing. Yeah, they were all there after the race and. Big surprise, big party. What cool. was the first thing your dad said to you when you saw him? Because I, I know you funny. He was you talked about these one-word text messages he keeps sending you. Yeah, pedal to the metal. Yeah. But um, my dad was funny because uh, he was still so <laughs> in his two, two last laps with his mind. So the first thing he wanted to do was just rediscuss that again. <laughs> it must have been the craziest thing in front of a TV to watch that as a father. As a father, oh my yeah. god. I, mean, I would not want imagine? to be in that position either. No. Well, now that you're you're a father yourself, you can yeah. put that into a oh bit more perspective, God. can't you? Right, well, I got another one from somebody else in your factory. This is Mark Neal, who works in the wind tunnel. Hi, Nico. Just wondering how it feels to be a father and a world champion at the same time, and how proud your daughter's going to be in years to come. I haven't thought so much of um, of, of this for my daughter in the future. I'm more proud, like with my wife yeah that she now you know what, what we've achieved together it to share it with her it definitely felt like this was a joint effort and she plays a well, big part it was part it was it. the whole season um, we uh, we had discussed and and she was she understood that when i come home <laughs> well, we're going to make it we are going to make it <laughs> we're going to make it <laughs> Keep We're family. actually going to make it. Amazing. <laughs> we had, we discussed, and, and she was completely understanding that when I'm at all times when I'm home this year, it needs to be 100% relaxation. Yeah. And yeah. having a child and taking care of a child is not relaxation. No, yeah? no. And so she was really understanding, and um, and uh, and she really sacrificed a lot. Yeah. Uh, in a way that, for example, she I never did any nights during the whole year. Yeah. Which now is going to change. <laughs> yeah, um, payback. And even then, during the day, when it was about taking care of uh, her, yeah. she understood that after a certain point, it just becomes really hard work. Yeah. Um, and when that point came, came, then she was okay for me to give her back to, to yeah. her and, and all that, you know. And that's really, that really f is is amazing, you know. And and it really worked because then home for me really was relaxation, and I need that because racing is is two hundred and ten percent intensity, you know, all these race weekends, Absolutely. and there was twenty one of them. Yeah. You know, it's like. And so uh, it really worked well that whenever I was home, I could really recover, relax, and go back to zero. And uh, 
I think it really showed through on Sunday evening for all of us that, that you know how much well, a how much of you know you're in love with your wife obviously but how much of a part she played because you you, you definitely celebrated with her you wanted her in all the photographs you know, you, you could see that you, she wasn't leaving your side, and that was a really, really nice moment, I thought. You're going to look back on those photos, aren't you, in years to come. Of course you will, it's the day you won the world title, and she'll be in all of them, which is nice. Yeah, yeah. The most emotional side for me was, was this thing with my dad. That's one of the most emotional things for me to see, is yeah. uh, the beginnings, you know, and, yeah, yeah. and uh, how my dad has helped me, and, and how we've both achieved the same thing. How damn cool is that? Well, we played that to you on Sky so Sports, cool. didn't we, earlier, a few races ago, the, the video of you saying, maybe one day I'd like to be able to challenge to be world champion, when you were, I think you were eight years oh, old yeah, or something. Yeah, eight years and, old, yeah. And I could yeah. see at the time that brought some real emotion back for you. And, yeah. and of course, now you've done it. Yeah. Right, one more from the factory. This is Mike Elliott. Uh, in fact, I used to work with Mike Elliott at McLaren, but he now works for you, and he's a head of the aero department. Nico, you've been with the team for seven years. Um, are there any defining moments during that period that you think have contributed to making you world champion? Do you know what? That wasn't Mike Elliott. That's that right, was, it sounded uh, a bit strange, Mike that Elliott. voice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know Mike Elliott. That's not Mike Elliott. He's next. Well, it's beating Schumacher, for yeah. sure, because I wouldn't be here today if I hadn't beaten him. And was that well, your toughest test, do you think? No, up, no. Um, in Formula 1? No, or? Lewis. No, but up until you, you had Lewis as a competitor, um, or as a teammate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because not only... It's, it, it, oh, wow. Oh, because with him, it went well beyond just the driving. Yeah. You know, for example, I arrive. For other people, he's like bigger than God, you know? Yeah. Like, for the journalists, I, yeah. I'm invisible, you know, yeah. initially. Yeah. Every, the whole attention is just on him. Um, and even for the team members, if we, we were doing strategy meetings. Yeah. I would never be looked at, even though it's both for both of us. Yeah, it would just be Michael, you know. But does that help just, or hinder you? Over no, no, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. Yeah, that's hard initially. But again, there, that's I've learned through that because yeah. I had to fight my way into getting the respect in the team, and yeah, and um, and it really worked, and I'm very thankful for the, yeah. for the team that they. Then defining another defining moment for sure was like Austin last year, because it was uh, really not a nice. It was a quite horrible way to lose the championship against Lewis. Yeah, in the way yeah. it happened because I made a mistake. I was yeah. leading, made a mistake, he got by, then we had that cap, uh, stupid cap moment afterwards yeah. and all that. Cap gate, and as it's been called. <laughs> <Cap gate. laughs> Jesus. Both losses to Lewis were really tough. You know, yeah. Losing in sports like that is, especially when it's like close and you're fighting for so long and everything, it's seriously tough. And how do you, do you have a method to get over that? Do you have, a, do you have some, you know, is there well, a process it's you fight, go through? You know? you just, it's just literally, it's fight. It's you think about it, think again. about it and fight and try and get better yeah. and do better, you know? Yeah. And um, so I spent like two days on my own after Austin like in the hotel and what I was just thinking about was what the hell was going on. And, uh, and I just decided, you know, for sure, I don't ever want to experience that again. I'm going to do everything <laughs> within my damn possibilities to, uh, <laughs> to make sure something like that never happens again. Yeah. Right, very quickly, before we finish, I've got two questions from fans uh, on Twitter who sent me some audio uh, to, to play to you. So if you can answer them, this one's from Sarah. Hi, Nico. Congratulations on winning the World Championship. I'm absolutely delighted for you. Um, Sarah from um, Dundalk in Ireland here. Um, do you think having a family changed you as a driver? That's a nice question. Definitely, because as I, as I said, you know, that home has just been fun for me and, and enjoyable. Yeah. yeah, and having a daughter is just special. And I'm subjectively the luckiest man in the person because uh, yeah. subjectively I have the most wonderful wife in the whole whole wide universe. Yeah, in the whole universe, and the best daughter in the whole universe. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why uh, it's yeah, and, and and that helps because I know that this year I've been arriving at the race trap just with a smile because it's just been so nice every yeah. time I'm. And then I come back and I'm there with a smile, arriving at the racetrack. Um, Happy driver is a fast driver. And that's what, that has to that has to be the case. Yeah. Mm, at yeah. least a little little bit, you know. In F1, every to beat Lewis Hamilton, every detail counts. You know. And, uh, <laughs> and is that does that mean a bit more to you that it's Lewis that you you had to come up yeah, against? Definitely. I mean, Lewis is. It's to me. It feels like I've been racing him all my life. And yeah. it feels like, uh, and he's taken so many championships away from me, yeah. even when we were 13, 14 years old. Yeah, you know? yeah. And yeah. just, you know, I was second close, we're yeah. fighting, and then he wins it. Um, and to get one back on him now and steal it away from him. Yeah, um, a little bit sweeter. Is for sure that little bit extra sweeter. But what, also because he's, he's the benchmark, you know, he's, yeah, of course, he's yeah. uh, one of the best of all, all time. Um, also, well, in terms of his statistics and everything, of course, and world championship wins and everything. 
Does it make you, um, when you look back on some of the photos and videos I've seen of you two as kids and coming through your car, yeah, you, yeah. you were like real proper good mates. Does really it good make friends, you yeah. sad? We, we, you... we went on holiday together and everything. Yeah. You know? I mean, does it sadden you that that's broken down a little bit, or do you think it's inevitable when two drivers are in the same team fighting for a world championship? No, it doesn't sadden me. It's just, it's completely understandable and normal because it's so intense yeah. and such a difficult environment. Um, it's not possible to be friends in, in that situation. Would Unless you? one accepts to be uh, second to the other. Yeah, of course. Yeah? Yeah. Then you can be friends. But yeah. until, until one of the two has accepted that, mm -hmm. you, you can't be friends. And do you think once you're over all this, once Formula One is, is kind of gone for you, you two will kind of fall back into being buddies again? There's, there, there's no reason why it can't one day. You've got a lot of history. No. Yeah, there's no reason. And, and anyways, even through all this, the, the respect uh, has never, never gone. You know? yeah. um, and even, even after Sunday, you know, I, I, I can understand, you know, that, yeah. that what he, why he did what he did, you know. Did you, you know, expect it? Was, it? Uh, Had you kind of talked about it before the race? I didn't expect it because, I, I didn't expect it, no. Um, no. No. But I think that was a bit naive. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I'm so pleased to say that you came through it. You did an incredible job. And I think having come from the, you know, the Formula 1 paddock, I know that you're a popular winner. Um, I mean, one final question, if I can, for me, is that you must have had plaudits and, and stuff coming, people congratulating you all over the world. Crazy. How do you sum up the achievement in your own words for what you achieved in 2016? So it was my childhood dream. Um, every racing lap that I've done uh, has been for this. Yeah. You know, so for sure, it's a, it's an awesome, uh, yeah, awesome achievement for me. And um, but to sum it up, it was very, very tough. Very, very tough. Yeah. yeah. Uh, to put, I gave it everything this year. Everything I, everything I had. Like I didn't leave a stone unturned. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, man. Congratulations. Thank you so much for today. That's been amazing, uh, and we all look forward to seeing you back in 2017, perhaps even stronger. Thank you very much. Thanks, man. Looking back on that now with a little bit of hindsight, I guess there's a couple of clues, aren't there, into his decision-making process in, in announcing that retirement, the sacrifice that he made, that how much that took out of him to win this world title. I, for one, have got total respect for him making a decision at the very top of his game, and I wish him the very best in the future.